can't beat starting a nice Friday with a bunch of paperwork. Hello guys, welcome back to Berham Engines. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of the time I get in first thing in the morning, get the purchase invoices into our system, Sage One, top accounting system, uh, file it all, put all the purchases on the correct job cards and with the prices and then we know where we are. So that's a habit that I like to sort of stick to. When it comes to doing the invoice at the end, all you've got to do really is double check the job card with the, the purchase invoices on there under the job card number and you um, stand a chance of getting paid for everything you've spent out, which is a good idea. So we've got this Cosworth block up on being faced. This is the one that we're going to be using for the build over there. So uh, we've took the block off the stand that we're not using. That is the one that's got the uh, the 92 mil pistons in. And so this is the one that's standard. Now I bought this yesterday, bought this to 0.5. We've got the pistons over here. So see the pistons there we've got to mod those crowns and i'll tell you why if you see in the top of this block it's got the the wire rings so it's got the copper wire rings that you used to put on so when you used to use the fiber gaskets back in the day they would put these copper rings in here uh, they're about a millimeter thick so what they used to do is sort of uh, about 25 thou deep into the block and then they would protrude about sort of 15 thou something like that um, and the idea of that would be to bite into the fiber gasket fire ring so it holds the compression really um, but we're not going to be using these we're going to be using the, the victor rhines wrc head gasket so what the only thing we can do with this is to face them out now when you give it one face it obviously cleans up and looks like that so if you actually feel that it feels like you're almost half tempted to sort of leave them in there, but the only reason we don't is you're not 100% sure uh, whether these actually do bottom out when they install them into the groove. You see the groove there. So to be honest, what, what you normally do is you, you give it another cut and then they'll just start peeling out. So can't run the risk of keeping these in, um, although they do look flush there, just cannot run the risk. So I just machine them out. Now we're going to end up taking probably 25 30 thou off this block face doing that done it plenty of times before but then what we've got to do is obviously take into consideration how much has been took off the cylinder head and then we've got to modify these crowns so i've got to do my dummy build normally i do my my jut out anyway at about 12 thou so i i do the jut out whatever i've had to take off the outside i take off the taper here and off the inside um, there's plenty of thickness in there. Um, there's about sort of five mil of thickness on these crowns on the original piston. So there's no issue there with it being too thin. And then once I've done that, I can then put my valve pockets in. But the only thing you have to do, you know, obviously it's not ideal, but the only thing you have to do is just tell the customer if they ever have to change a piston, you know, that's what you have to do. You have to modify the piston crowns. But then, then again, I do modify the crowns on any pistons that I install anyway. So that's what we're doing. We're just going to chomp that. And um, as I say, I've bored it plus five and then I'm going to, plus half a mil, sorry. And then I'm just going to hone it. And that can be thoroughly cleaned and sort of ready to go, really. Paul Dove was in yesterday. He's stripped the cylinder head. Um, we're just going to get some guides. Got most of the stuff there. We're just going to get the guides and um, install those and then get the heads ready to put back together. Over here, we've got another one of those TD5 bent like a banana exhaust amp, uh, manifolds. I'm just about to face that. Um, we'll, see, we'll see how bad that one is, but I can guarantee it's, you know, you're going to have to take your usual one millimetre plus off that. I guarantee it. So we've just taken another five foul cut off this one. And in a minute, you may be able to see that, that ring start to peel out. Um, I mean, this is this is 15 thou that I've took off this now. So bear in mind, after 10 thou, although these although these are supposed to be be um, 25 thou deep in the block, after 10 thou they've started peeling out. So that is one main reason that um, we can't leave those in and just put the gasket on top. There we go. 
see it started to peel out and it still really looks like we've got about another 15, probably 10 or 15 pounds to take off this block before the grooves are out. Yeah, there we go, you see it's coming out. Uh, certainly can't put the gasket on that. There we go, he's out. Right, had another delivery yesterday for, for um, this is Lloyd, our customer up in Scotland. Um, the one that we have got to, he'd had a load, a load of stuff coming from Romain Opliger at Opliger Motorsport. Um, apparently that deal's fell through on the block that he was going to get from Romain. He's managed to source this block from somewhere else. Just looking at the back of it, it looks like it's got liners in. We've got studs here. I haven't even turned it over to see whether it's had the stud conversion. I can see that it's had the oil ways drilled at the back for the oil jets, but they're not the oil jets I use. These ones, because of that locator, I'm suspecting these are the old mound tune type ones. Um, and I don't see the, I don't see any of the, the spray jets. So I might have to leave it to Lloyd to, um, to get them himself, unless he wants me to mine. But if I turn it over, Yeah, so you see it's had the it's had the liners installed. They're not the same liners as I normally put in. It looks like it's been proper open decked here because of these gaps here. But I'm gonna measure these bores, see what we're at. It's, it's meant to have been all done, you know what it's like. Um, but it looks like it's been standing for a while, although it's greased up. So I might give the block face a, a light lick over. Uh, may have to bore it, I haven't got a clue yet, but I've got to supply the pistons and rods for this. We've got the crank, that's all good. Um, we're going to have to balance the crank assembly, sort the pistons and rods out, do me dummy build, do my magic on the pistons, and we've got to build him a short engine, but we've got to build it fairly smartish because he said that um, the engine that he's using in his race car is gone kaput. Um, he's had it mapped and there's been an issue and it's crack the block apparently straight through down through the main so that block scrap never really heard of that before on the cozzies so we're going to get this one sorted sometime today and just sort of see where we are with it and see if we can get some trick pistons and rods ordered up for it so guys and girls I've just had isaac stripping the jag bottom end the xkr and it's not great news um and whether you watched the last video, but visibly before the pistons were out, we could see that two of the bores had what looked like aluminium deposit on the top of the bore. So get the crank out, we'll get the pistons out, and we'll see exactly what's going on. Um, I did say to him that there was a little bit of sign, there was a few signs on the supercharger blades that debris had sort of gone through the system, so maybe that's what it could have been. Although the two pistons where the aluminium deposits were on the board did look a little bit like they were running lean at the top. So anyway, we've got them all out. Isaac's done a great job today, actually. Change, slight change of subject. He's, we've had him refacing and blasting valves and stripping this bottom end. He's really methodical for his first day. Bear in mind, he's only a 19 year old kid. Absolute top job. Um, he'll be starting Monday properly. But anyway, we've took the pistons out and this is what we found. So that is one of the pistons. You can see on the surface, the gray area at the top there does look a bit like it's been running lean to us. Um, we've got all the pistons out and the two that had the aluminium deposits, it was aluminium, obviously. Um, this is one of those, but also another five. So seven out of the eight pistons are like this. Um, the top ring is stuck in that groove around that area so I'm pushing that ring there look and it's just not coming through that is stuck in there so that isn't doing a great deal of work at all another sign that it's been running hot um, from running lean is I've measured the skirt of the piston and we're running the skirt is about in that measurement across the two skirts there it is about six thou smaller than what it should be so that has just deformed that piston we're going to go for a new set of pistons anyway, but the problem we've got is I've measured the bores and it's an 86 mil bore. I've measured them and 
a couple of them, and it isn't actually, uh, one of them isn't actually one that was had the aluminium deposits on, um, but it's about four thou um, big on the thrust at the top. Not so important because it's the, the top couple of inches where obviously I don't think you're going to run into too much issue. And, and the customer said it ran, it didn't rattle or anything. So I'm going to say to him, look, the only thing we can do is deglaze these bores. Obviously, all we're doing is putting the pistons, rods, and the crank in. If you want Stuart to build the engine up over there um, and you want us to put these in, the only way of, of sorting this block out really is to liner it. You're looking at two or three months to get the liners made. Um, and then obviously doing the job and the extra expense on doing the job. It's a couple of thousand quid with the liners. So I'm gonna give him the option. Not, I'm pretty certain he's not gonna to wanna to wait. So we're gonna to have to put a good disclaimer on this and um, on his head be it. But it's hard to know what's gonna happen. Obviously if the ball's distorted like that, even if it deglazes okay, which I'm sure it will, um, there's, it's an uncertainty as to whether, whether the one it's gonna rattle or two, the rings are going to bed into that ball. So we're going to leave the option open to him. Um, and yeah, so not good really, not good at all. I once, wouldn't expect him to see the other five like that. But um, yeah, it's definitely had an overall sort of running lean issue, I would say. And it's overheated. That's probably what's done the head gasket on one side. But yeah, not good, guys. So as you can see, we faced out those grooves now and we have we took 30 thou off the block face so yeah once we do the dummy build we're probably going to end up realistically with just over a mil of protrusion on them pistons so that's about how much we've got to we've got to take off the crown um, and the bowl and what have you so yeah we'll soon see on that um i've just had to wait because i'm using all these little posts here on this block i've just had to wait until i've finished that to finish off setting up the um the bananaed manifold um, so this is what I've needed I've set it all up so what I do now is because it sort of bows like that I just touch it on in the middle um, once I've got the the heights either end about right touch it on the middle make sure it's on zero down here uh, make sure that the head's locked off so it can't sort of fall down and then bring it over to the right so always because the tool is sort of set a bit like that in effect, probably about a thou. Um, we always cut from this side, so we feed the bed in with the cutter to the right hand side. If we put down here, we do a 10 thou cut, and then we just put the feed on. I normally just wrap it over when it's, because um, I know it's not going to cut that end yet, because that's probably going to be about a millimetre too low. So because they're so bent and because they twist like this, you can only really set it up with the height gauge as a bit of an average. So I normally just make sure that both ends, it's not too much tipped like this, and both ends are the same height. And then we know that we're just skimming it out and it's really, you know, what else can you do? You can't, um, you can't, set it up precision because it's all over the place so it's just an average really so Lloyd's block that we received yesterday I've got it all cleaned up got all the grease off fortunately the grease has done a good job and stopped it from corroding um, I'm gonna have to find out what type of liner these are because it looks like there's a bit of staining in there for from sort of storage or cleaning I'm not sure someone used a bit of a product on it but these are a wet liner type now I've got all the grease off you can see down here where it's basically like a you know big top hat liner where you they've machined the core of the block out down about three inches and then this liner sort of sits on a face down in the block here um, sort of steps steps inwards and then goes down and you can see the base of it underneath there so yeah these are a wet liner type um, Obviously, because they're fitted, I'm not sure whether it's like an interference fit down the bottom or they use an O-ring or what, but I'm just going to have a chat with Lloyd and say, obviously, because I didn't fit them, I'm not really sure how they fitted it. I'm going to have to give it... There's a couple of marks on the block face, so I'm going to have to give it a light lick over. It doesn't even look like it's clean there before they've... 
fitted the liners and you can feel a bit of a step so that's a bit odd um we've got a mix and match it has been 10 studded we've got a bit of a mix and match of studs here we've got the six with the 17 mil um seal carrier there which i don't like using because they never sit deep enough but it looks like what they've done here is they bored down deeper so these studs can in effect sit lower i don't really like that idea but this seems like a little bit of an old school setup they've used the the 14 mil seal carrier on the outside which are fine um but they are yeah they're still the old type they're not the they are the arp ones i get from julian godfrey but that's all we've got the block's been machined for it and i'm sure it's going to do the job providing that they those center six do sit down far enough so we're getting a, a deep enough thread in that lug down the bottom of the block so yeah because of little areas like this and this where it hasn't cleaned don't understand that if you're going to face it face it properly but um you see a couple of little imperfections there's one sort of there where i don't quite know what's happened i would have thought if they'd machined that perfectly round and the line is round it should fit and there shouldn't be any gaps i don't know but anyway they've been fitted so really i think what we're gonna to have to do here i've got to build a short motor for lloyd so i'm gonna to have to have a chat with him and say look obviously i haven't got a clue how, how the liners are fitted so we're assuming that they've been fitted right um and really it's on your head be it but yeah at least it all looks all right i'm just going to measure the bores now see what they are and then go from there really so you can see for yourself guys that's 30 thou there so that's three quarters of a mil we hardly even started touching the end here. We have, yeah, just literally there and started touching the back. So that is bent like a bloody banana. So I'm expecting getting on a couple of mil will clean this up. Well, that's it from us, guys, for another week. Um, we will see you again Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. We'll see you again. Cheers.